Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are looking forward to the first flashback SBC of FIFA 23 today. Based off of a leak and what we have seen, we might begin that SBC. Now, we talked about it yesterday, so you may know who the player is. We're going to talk more about today and how we're really not sure, or I'm not sure, how exactly the market's going to react to a big SBC like this, given the potential of it going into so many people's squads, but with the new chemistry system, how is that going to work out? We're going to talk about that today, how the market could move more even today on Saturday after a crazy day yesterday of market movements and panic selling with some more supply in the store. I'm expecting that today. And of course, we have to talk about all of the market movements yesterday. There were some huge profits to be had. I had one of the best trading, the best trading day of the year on my personal account. I know a lot of people, some of you guys included, made a lot of coins or bought cards at really, really good prices as there was a ton of price drops yesterday and also a lot of prices went rocketing back on the market later after that and some prices are still up right now which is good to see so we're going to talk about all of that and more in today's video if you're excited for it hit the thumbs up subscribe if you're new let's talk about today on saturday first get that out of the way and then we'll talk about yesterday we're going to start by talking about the flashback SBC that might be the first of FIFA 23. It did not drop yesterday, so I would imagine that this comes today. I think that was the original leaked date from some people that I heard was the Thiago Silva was going to be released on Saturday, October 1st. So this would be a massive SBC. Number one, if it is anywhere near close to these stats, that card is unbelievable. Number two, this is a card that would just generate a lot of hype. Thiago Silva, big name, pretty good career, right? Known by a lot of people, playing in the Premier League now, and with the Brazilian nationality, especially for the new chemistry system, this is a, a fun SBC because it gives you one of those cards that, think about like a flashback PK, right? Everybody loves flashback PK when he gets a, a card in game because it's a card that you never use because it's not meta enough because he doesn't have enough pace and they gave him they give him enough pace, right? That's the situation here with Thiago Silva. Great card, except for the pace. They give him a pace boost. Maybe they have to decline that defense or decline that physical stat just a little bit, but that's going to make it hype, right? And of course, with the potential links that he has with the new chemistry system, it does count, come down to price. It does come down to whether the stats look good or not. But this is the really like, this is the first test of FIFA 23 where we're getting a potential SBC that so many people would want to do. Think about SBCs we've had this year. Yeah, we've had the Rashford Player of the Month, but it didn't hit home for everybody yesterday. It's a nice SBC, but not insane. The upgrade wasn't that great. Kessie's SBC is cool, but he's a bit harder to link unless you use Barcelona players. And, you know, even like the Di Maria SBC was just okay, right? This, a Premier League center back SBC, these SBCs always make waves. And especially if it's a big name like Thiago Silva, it's going to be an interesting day today seeing what this card comes out at and what his price point is at. But, I mean, this is what's going to be the most interesting. How is the market going to move because of this? Well, you would expect that other Premier League center backs, maybe like a Akanji inform in Team of the Week 2 or a Saliba inform from Team of the Week 1, you would expect that a card like this might take a bit of a hit in price just because there's a new substitute item that is coming out onto the game with some decent stats and it's an SBC. So maybe people tr uh, sell the tradable Akanji they have to go and do the Thiago Silva SBC, depending on the price. And you know, that's how those prices go down. Now, also you think about the links to this, right? What kind of cards would go up? Because now with the new chemistry system, you can't just throw in like one or two players. Like, you know, if, if a Thiago Silva SBC was going to drop, you would think about guys like Conte. You think about maybe a Reese James type player, maybe Edward Mendy. Those are the types of players that might go up a little bit with an SBC like that dropping on the old chemistry system. Well, now, you know, you have to think about the most popular Brazil Premier League Chelsea players and try to figure out will any of those move with a hype SBC like this and we haven't seen an SBC yet this year with enough hype to really move the needle on a lot of cards to make it super noticeable right so I think about Brazilian players in the Prem I think about the new ones to watch Anthony the new ones to watch Gabriel Jesus I think about Gold Conte still but you know there's just not it, it's interesting right I'm really curious I'm mostly just interested to see how the market reacts to a Thiago Silva today. And then, of course, you have to think about Koulibaly, whose price is up a lot anyways because of being a one of the best Premier League center backs in the game. This guy links to Thiago Silva, but if you are in a team right now using Koulibaly, 
Does Thiago Silva present to you an untradeable upgrade for that team if his card looks good enough, right? There's a lot of ifs here. But instead of having a, you know, a link that is not as good with the Senegal nation, you have Brazil, which is way more linkable for the new chemistry system. Would that make Koulibaly go down a bit and then maybe up as people would buy him to link to, to Thiago Silva? Like, I'm just mostly interested to see how the market reacts in response to this SBC today, just because new market cross-gen um, not that that's not a big aspect of it, but it's the chemistry system. That's where I'm really curious to see cards go up today. But your most popular Brazilians, your most popular Chelsea players, probably going to have a boost in price if, in fact, this drops today and it's good value. If it's not good value, then it'll just kind of be a dud, right? Those center backs won't go down that much. Those Chelsea or Brazil players wouldn't even go up that much either on the market today. So that's the biggest question. I, I wanted to talk about it for a bit because seriously, like this is the type of SBC that gets people super duper excited and will gain a lot of traction if it is priced well and priced correctly. So we'll have to see where that goes on the market today. Now, also today on Saturday, if you notice in the store, all of the promo packs are expiring today at 6 p.m. on Saturday, except, except for that FIFA 23 starter pack, or whatever. All of these are expiring today, which means to me, we're absolutely going to be getting more uh, promo packs today. We've had them since Wednesday. Uh, yesterday, they dropped 35K packs, 25K packs, 15K packs, and 20K packs on tradable, and they still don't have the uh, probabilities updated yet for the 35K pack. I don't know how. It's It says check back in a few minutes. Well, it's been like 12 hours now, EA Sports, you know, like hit us with some probabilities, but this is going to bring a little bit more supply on the market, right? Of course, a lot of people spent FIFA points yesterday. There's still people that are going to be opening packs today on Saturday with those FIFA points. First promo of the year. People are excited for these ones to watch cards to get their year started on FIFA and people just, they do, they do, they do that with FIFA points. That's just kind of what people do. And did Anthony just go up 10K right in front of my face? No way he did. He was 230. Now he's 247. Late night fluctuations. You got to love a rare card, right? So regardless, if there's more uh, supply hopping on the market today, I would probably expect these ones to watch is to take a little bit of a hit. Of course, your guy like Holland, your guy like Lewandowski, Rudiger, and Sadio Mane, they're not going to move as much, but maybe a Darwin Nunez, maybe a Chalmany would drop a little bit today. And I'll talk more about these ones to watch cards here in a minute about how I think their prices might fluctuate today, especially with some of them playing in games. But of course, for the gold cards on the market, we know how these guys react to supply, right? Think about how some of these cards reacted like on Thursday where they went down a little bit, they had some dips, then they came back. Probably won't be that as extreme of a dip as you saw on Thursday for a guy like Valverde, but just get used to being able to trade with that supply. Cards that drop a little bit and then bounce back. I think you will see that today on Saturday as a market movement that will be pretty consistent. So definitely keep her out for that, but supply in the store and a Tiago Silva flashback. I'm really not expecting too much else than that. The only other thing we could see is we had a new leak yesterday for a dynamic duo. And I, I don't know if this is going to drop via an SBC or if this is an objective. And again, uh, I like the idea here. I'm not a huge fan of the players because you guys are going to look at this and be like, nah, man, this is fodder, whatever. The, again, the dynamic duo aspect of this is a W because think about for the new chemistry system this year, two players from one club get to a chemistry point. And especially if you have some players from a that certain league in your squad already, then you're going to get these players on their chemistry points very, very easily. So the dynamic duo is kind of interesting because it could give you two players that you don't usually get to use. You can put them in your team, get some decent chemistry points with the squad you maybe have already. And boom, you're trying out new players that you don't often use. So I don't know if this is an objective or an SBC, but it's the first dynamic duo leak. And I guess that's what that card design is for that we saw added to the code a couple nights ago as well. Uh, don't know if this is today. That'd be a lot of content for a Saturday. So I might say that it's not, but honestly, who knows? Now let's move back. And that's all the, th that's all the stuff for Saturday today. Let's look at yesterday because Friday was a mad day. We knew that it was going to be mad. We knew that it was going to be crazy, but prices yesterday absolutely moved mad and i'm still selling a park g sung that i picked up for a quick flip i've been trying to sell this guy like 320,000 coins uh and make a small profit nothing super crazy but yesterday was the most profitable day on the market for me out of any day of fifa yet and i think it was for a lot of people as well because prices moved every which way and i want to show you one graph right now that kind of sums it all up on what happened yesterday 
we're going to take a look at Alan St. Maximin because it all started in the early morning yesterday with a bunch of panic selling. St. Maximin from 37 k all the way down to 29,000 coins. I actually picked up two, three actually, not two. I picked up three gold Hyunmin Suns at 140,000 coins early in the morning. I bought right around here, sold them an hour later at 170. And then when all of the packs and everything else dropped on the game at 6 to 7 p.m. UK time, ones to watch, everybody was ripping their packs. Prices dropped again. Sun went all the way down to 135k and has now rebounded back all the way to 170. Where he, again, it's like it's just like a roller coaster almost yesterday. There was so much panic selling because people were fearing the actual supply. But what that did was it made the actual supply not look as bad because there were so many people that were waiting to buy. As cards dropped, they just flipped the switch, went out onto the market and bought a lot of these cards. And that's not saying that these cards need to drop a lot lower. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is there were so many people that were ready to buy. And unlike last year, right, we keep making these comparisons to last year in FIBA 22, where the market dropped off so much and it like died on that first weekend. And there were still bounce backs, but it like almost died. This year we were expecting the drop. So more people were waiting to buy until the drop happened. And that's why I think you saw such a strong buyback yesterday. It was definitely stronger than I expected, but I think so many people were able to profit off of it and um, make coins off of it, then it ended up being fine as long as you bought in either of these dips, right? A lot of people bought in that first hour or two after your content dropped, and now you're seeing your prices go up and up and up. And, you know, apart from a little bit of supply today, maybe a little bit of supply on Sunday with a couple prices, maybe having some fluctuations here and there, if you're still holding on to, or if you bought players that are in the high tier meta, Ronaldo, Benzema, Messi, you know, those types of players, you know, Vinny Jr., those types of guys are safe. And I was even telling you guys to hold those before all this crash happened, because if you bought Ronaldo like a couple days ago when he was still, you know, 200 something thousand coins, you're like, Nate, do I really need to sell at 350K to try to buy at 330? And then now he goes up to 400? No, nah, I just would hold the card, right? So that's kind of why we told you guys to hold the top tier. And from here, the demand is going to start to take over. Most of your supply happened yesterday. Yeah, like I said, you'll have a little bit from here on out the next couple of days. But if you're holding a Ronaldo, a Messi, if you bought cards for your team, if they're high rated and they're more high tier meta cards, I think you are chilling and you don't have to worry about them too much at all. But it was crazy on the market yesterday. Like I said, I flipped some of those cards in the morning. I bought three Suns, Amane and two Pop Pens uh, yesterday, sold them, flipped them, made some good money. And then I went back and I was fully liquid for 6 p.m. UK time. I bought a Cristiano Ronaldo for 349,000 coins, sold it literally 15 minutes later at 397. That was fantastic. I went on the market, bought a Forlan for 417, sold it for 465, bought a Leva for 249, sold it for 283, bought a Gabriel Jesus for 207, sold it for 250. And then I have the still the Park G Sung. I bought a couple other golds in there as well. Basically, if you bought any gold cards yesterday, anything that was meta popular, people wanted for their teams, these guys just exploded, right? Now, I would still be careful with the lower tier stuff. And I think also part of the reason why you saw the market go up so much yesterday too is think about all the people that were getting on the game the first time for the first time yesterday that maybe didn't have much of a team at all so there's still a lot of demand or more demand than in previous years for those starter squad type players you still saw a lot of prices drop yesterday right like a perfect example in my mind is Timo Werner was all the way down at 4,000 coins I don't know where he is now He's up, okay, he's still about 4,000 coins, right? Remember this guy was 10, 11K a couple days ago and we were like, sell this card? That's the kind of card that is down a lot right now in this market. I know Joe Gomez is down. I think Zaha is down a decent amount. Um, so you still have players that are maintaining their value that are on the lower tier, but their prices have really dropped off considerable amounts just because of that supply that happened yesterday. And some cards you're like, Nate, I'm looking at Nkunku right now. And you know, I was hoping he was gonna go to like 110 yesterday and he only went to like 120 and he's only 140. Can he go higher? I think yes. I still think a guy like this in Kunku can still go higher. I still think that some cards in the market right now are actually undervalued. 
Um, as I look at some of the hero prices and even some of the team of the week prices still, you know, Modric bounced back very nicely. Marquinhos bounced back. Salah bounced back over 100,000 coins. I still think that some cards in this market are maybe a little undervalued um, just because we're in such the early stages of this game and more coins need to come onto this game over the next week or so as people gear up for the first weekend league, they get their first rivals rewards, maybe the squad battle rewards and more promo packs just being out continues to put coins on this market i think that'll continue to make prices go higher up so if you if you bought a lot of cards yesterday like i don't know some people were buying hakimi's i think he was at like fifty thousand coins or something like that he dropped off so much yeah 51k and then he exploded now he's at like 64 he was even at like 69k and now he's down a couple thousand coins for a lot of these cards I really do think uh, that holding on to them is probably the best move because if you think about it, right, yesterday was our biggest kind of like scare with supply, if you will. And, you know, after after yesterday and moving on through the rest of this week, it should be pretty smooth sailing on the higher tier meta cards, um, except for maybe if EA has something crazy up their sleeve, but I, I wouldn't even really expect that. So that's kind of how the market is right now. Today on Saturday, the best place to trade Keep an eye, a close, close eye on these ones to watch cards because yes, there are some guys that have games today. Uh, yes, there are going to be cards that will have fluctuations. And a lot of these guys kind of, they started they started high, they got low, and now they're getting lit really rare. Gabriel Jesus, like I sold mine at 250. Um, I was expecting kind of what we usually have during promos is like the late night drop off, right? Like a lot of people sign off the game on a Friday night after they played some foot champs games during the normal part of the year. And a lot of times promo cards kind of drop off. But since these are live, since they have that aspect to them, Probably the actual play on my part would have been to hold Gabriel Jesus because now he has 285,000 coins. I would have made a little bit more profit. But, you know, some of these cards are, are getting kind of high overnight and their prices just continue to slide up. I, I think it's because they have that live aspect to them and maybe some of them have games today. The one that I'm just a little unsure about is Darwin Nunez. 91,000 coins. He could very well go off have himself a big game um, and 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 go, you know, and get an upgrade. And this card would become an 84 uh, if he were to get into a team of the week. But this guy was down at like 70,000 coins. And I would be worried. I think there's more downside than upside for a lot of these, uh, of course, unless they score goals. But let's say Nunez doesn't perform, uh, you know, that great on the game this weekend, which I'm going to double check and make sure is today the first. Um, it is. Liverpool play Brighton today. So let's say Nunez doesn't do anything today. I think he could go back down to like 70,000 coins, maybe even 75,000 coins. I think he'll drop back down today if that is something that happens. You know, that's that's what I'd be careful with with these OTW cards is the potential for them to actually drop back down lower um, before, you know, or I think that's there's a greater potential of that than them skying in price uh, because they have a really good game, right? So that's what I'd be careful with and that's what I would be just wary of on the market right now and you know one wants to watch card to talk about specifically is erling holland 1.2 million coins super duper rare for this lpw card since that card is so expensive if you bought or invested in the gold erling holland a he got a price range update so now you can make more profit shout out to ea sports for this price range update um and b People are going and buying this gold Holland because everybody wants to use him in FIFA. They're hearing that he is incredible. And uh, his once to watch card is so expensive that nobody can afford it. And they're still willing to pay more and more for this gold Erling Holland. So if you have this card in your team or if you bought it as an investment, you are looking really good right now. Keep holding on to that because it's most likely just going to go higher into the weekend as more people get more coins towards the middle to end of next week before he goes out of packs i would just keep holding this card why not right other out of packs cards you look at sadio mane i believe is like 200,000 coins or somewhere around there you know i'm a little surprised he didn't go up too much more than this but again his ones to watch card is 600k holland's of course is like a million coins difference this one's only 400k different from his otw card Bayern did win yesterday. Sadio Mane did have a pretty good performance, uh, but I think Musiala is going to end up getting the team of the week. So his ones to watch card didn't go up because of that. Um, and then, um, you know, just looking at his gold card aspect, though, I do think that his gold card here is, is possibly going to get rare and go to like 220,000 coins during the next couple of days. I mean, it already is pretty rare. So, you know, just keep an eye on that sort of stuff on the market right now. Uh, and then, of course, we have to talk about Renato Sanchez. 
because this was a card that did not end up coming into packs as it was leaked. If Remember that little spreadsheet thing that we looked at in yesterday's video? That spreadsheet looks in, is looking like it was pretty legit because it basically called everything so far. So Ronaldo was not in the ones to watch team. He's in the mini release that will come out tomorrow. He went from 54K down to 47, but still rose back because A, super meta. Yes, he got supplied. I don't like this card. I'm not going to trade with him, even though he has really good fluctuations. Uh, I'm going to steer clear of this guy. So if you have him in your team, I would just say don't hold on to him for very long. People are still invested in this card. They're still thinking it's going to go higher on Sunday when he goes out of packs. Just be careful with a card like this holding super duper long. That's all I have to say about those types of cards and the lower tier ones that are on this game for sure. Now, you guys might be wondering, Nate, what did I pack yesterday? I'll give you a quick roundup of my packs yesterday. Um, I did some hybrid nation and hybrid leagues packs. My best pull from those was probably Valverde. Yeah, definitely Valverde. I packed two Pedris, packed a Ter Stegen, packed an Eden Hazard, um, got Reese James, and I also picked up the Tyler Adams from my guaranteed ones to watch pre-order pack because I just opened it. And I was like, I'm not going to wait for Renato to drop. I'm just going to rip this open. I joined the Adams Club. So up the leads. Hopefully we can get some upgrades there. Uh, it almost fits the team, but not quite. So the team underwent some uh, changing yesterday and now it looks a lot more legit. I am going to do the Richarlison objective. So I'm not sure how I'm going to fit him in here and make this team still pretty competitive, but we're piecing it together one by one. I need a new left back because I really need a pack like a Cancelo would be perfect or a Ferlin Mendy would actually be even more perfect for some Real Madrid links, but that's besides the point as of right now. I'm going to keep making some coins. I think if you're trying to make some constant and consistent flips on the market, I would watch the heroes. I'd watch the icons and even still fluctuation trade with some of these informs that are out of packs, right? These guys still move on the market. They're still in demand as well. Those are the types of cards as rare as you can get. That's where I would be looking on the market in the next uh, basically a couple days over the weekend as people are building squads, getting more coins and trying out new players on this game. So it's going to be very fun on the next couple of days with ones to watches out there. Again, if there are goals that are scored, hop on the market, snag a couple cards, those card prices will go up and trade with those. And remember, don't be too greedy for those quick flip ones to watch profits, get it in, get it out get it gone because you want to take your money and run with cards like that when there's so many people that invest in wants to watch his weekly for hoping that their player is going to score goals so that's the video for today if you did enjoy it smash a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new it has been Nate Foot Account and I'll catch you guys later peace out